of the hammer down. Why? Because Jesus said so. He said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. And we're going to go. I've come too far to turn back now. Look back now. Number one, because I got to die to my past. Number two, I get to, I've come too far to turn back on him now because when it got dark, he didn't leave my side. I'm telling you, Calvary lasted six solid hours. In the first three hours, it was, he said it in the night. He wasn't saying it to nobody but to God and himself. And you know what this thief got to do? He got to listen to Jesus talk to God, his, to, uh, to God, his Father. Oh, I'm talking about when you, it's one thing to have communion with God, but when, boy, and this is over my head right here, but when God's having a trial to have communion with God as it is on the cross, and Jesus, and you see the heart of Jesus up for his Father, amen, his Father may have forsook him for our sin. But Jesus never forsook him, never turned his back on him, stayed true. And it wasn't that God forsook him because he didn't like him, because he didn't love him. It was a Bible way to be done. And God turned his back on his son. But God, and these last four sayings, if we will live these last four sayings, we can make it through the dark times of our life. The first saying, in the, the, the first saying uh, which would be the fourth saying, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, this is a question that never got answered. You show me one time where God the Father or the Holy Spirit ever answered him. Have you ever asked God a question and he didn't answer you? Sometimes the silence of God is the best answer that we could ever get. Sometimes you, know, you, might, you won't understand that to you those from dark times. Because when you get out on the other side, God will so fix it where you won't have to ask him. He'll make the lesson so clear. He'll put the writing on the chalkboard so clear that you'll know what the lesson was about. You'll know what the dark times was about. But if we're going to make it, we're going to have to learn how to question God without questioning God. I mean, let me illustrate it like this. I tell my children to clean the room and if they say why, they get a whipping. But if my children come to me and say, Daddy, why do we use King James Bible? I'll answer the question. See, he questioned God without accusing him. He questioned God without anger. He questioned God without an assumption. He questioned God without an attitude. And when we question God to get an answer, Lord, why would you let this person be born blind? It was for the glory of God. And when we question God with the right attitude, after we'll get the right answers, Lord, why am I going through this? Oh, Lord, not that I can accuse you, but I want to get out of this dark time. What's going to make me more like you? What's going to make me closer to you? And dear God, help us. Let a question God in the right kind of way. Silence. No answer. You've asked God questions and he ain't never answered you. You've been in this thing any length of time. So what do we do? We accept the silence. And we be reminded that we are in the will of God. When it got dark, he didn't leave me. But then next day, he said, I thirst. John chapter number 19, verse number 28, he said, I thirst. You're going to make it through the dark times. You better get thirsty and stay thirsty. As a heart paid after the water brook, so paid my soul after the old God. Well, I thought, man, I, I, I thought about these disciples that they stayed with God. They turned their back on everything they ever was. They forsook Jesus by faith. They followed him by faith. Yes, there were some meals. Yes, there was a payday in there. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I, and sometimes I've wondered. Sometimes it ain't going to be our faith that keeps us near the cross. Sometimes it's just simply going to be because we love him whether we believe what's going on or not. Hey, sometimes, yeah, just well say man right there. And sometimes we've had question marks in our mind. Hey, sometimes we've wondered whether we was in the will of God, whether God knew what he was doing or not. And you just well say man right there. But you know why we stayed with him? Because we loved him. And we stayed with him. Does that make any sense at all? I didn't say we quit believing in him. I didn't say it was just faith. It's an element of faith and love put together. And because we believe him, we love him. And we stay with God. 
even when he don't answer us. Oh, but it's a heart panting after the water brooks. So panting my soul after thee, oh God. Are you thirsty today? How thirsty for God are you? Are you thirsty enough like Isaac was in the days of old? Well, the Bible said that he dug again his daddy's wells. He dug them out and somebody got it. He dug the first well out and somebody got it. You look up that word earth and that text, it means ashes. It means rubble. Those wells at one time had well houses over them. And the Philistines came in and set the well houses on fire. And they got filled up with what they used to be. Are you a has-been? Did you used to be spirit filled? Did you used to walk with God? Did you used to have the touch of God? Did you used to be surrendered to God? I tell you what Isaac did. He dug out what it used to be. And it got, didn't get to keep that well. But he was thirsty. And he kept on digging. How thirsty for God are you today? Are you thirsty? For Almighty God. I, I used this illustration here before, but may I repeat myself. I was in the state of Mississippi preaching revival years ago. My wife gave birth to our twins, and me and my, I guess she was two years old at the time, how old she was. Me and my oldest daughter, Elizabeth Ann, we went to Mississippi, and... I'm talking about being thirsty for God. I'm not talking about his benefits. I'm not talking about his blessings. I'm talking about his presence. I'm talking about God, as long as you bless me with your presence, I ain't got to have another meeting. I ain't got to have another offering. I ain't got to have no pats on the back. Lord, as long as I've got you, that's all that matters. And uh, boy, I said, we pulled up to the hotel. I said, Elizabeth, you stay in your car seat. I'm, uh, I'm 10 feet away from you. I'm walking through the glass door. You can see me. I can see you. I'm going to pick the room key up, and then we'll park and we'll go together. Oh, I, I took the key out of the truck, locked the door, rolled the windows up. I mean, I didn't take my eyes off of her. I turned around just for a second to go through the door. And boy, and I no more got through that door. Dear God, the awfulest crying and the awfulest screaming you'd ever heard in your life. I went running back, opened up a door. She had jumped out of her car seat. And Brother Erica, the tears were shooting out of those little blue eyes. Oh, did she reached her arms around me and grabbed me and hugged me. I mean, just about choked me to death. I said, honey, what's wrong? Has somebody messed with you? Has somebody bothered you? Are you scared? Why in the world do you cry? She said, Daddy, I'm just crying for you. She said, Daddy, all I want you. Dear God, I got in the hotel room that night. I laid down on the bed. I said, God, that's how thirsty I am for you. Lord, nothing else matters to me. I just want you. I want you to embrace me and to love me and breathe on me and feel me. I'm thirsty for God. I'm thirsty for you for God today. Are you thirsty enough to cry for him? Are you thirsty enough to dig for him? Are you thirsty enough and I pay the price that I get with God and to get filled with the Holy Ghost. How thirsty are you today? Are you thirsty? Jesus on the cross said, I'm thirsty. I thirst. Wouldn't it God, Brother Hill, that we could preach to people sitting on the edge of their pews, thirsty and hungry for God. The more I drink, the thirstier I get. The more eat the hunger I get. He stood and cried and said, If any man thirst, let him come after me, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I tell you, most of our Baptists ain't nothing but a dead, stagnated mud hole. Don't know nothing about freshness. Hey, you've heard this preached before, but I'll tell you whether you take the same text, whether you sing the same song, oh, you know what the difference is? It's that fresh oil from heaven. It's that fresh oil from God. It's that fresh breath. And Lord put the fresh touch on an old message and a fresh touch on an old song and a fresh touch on an old saint and you'll have something that'll help somebody else. I'm just simply saying when you get in the dark time, get thirsty and stay thirsty. I thirst. Next. Job chapter number 19 verse number 30. It is finished. When it gets dark, don't quit. Jesus finished the will of God. Brother Blue just brought it out a minute ago. That perfect word. And that is finished in our text I'm reading you today is the same word. You know what Jesus did? He not only did the good and acceptable will of God, but he perfectly finished the will of God for his life. Oh, Lord God in heaven, I wish y'all could get what I'm saying today. Is somebody in here thinking about quitting on God? Is somebody in here you're thinking about resigning your church because it ain't going the way you think it ought to? Why don't you just compare what you think about resigning evangelism or coming off the mission field and taking a job or, take, or doing something 
it's something different. Hey, something different ain't always the answer. I tell you what it is. It may be we need to get our attitudes checked out. It got dark and we can't see what God's doing and we can only see around us. Hey, man, somebody say amen right there. And we don't, we like, I like to see long range plans, don't you? But God don't let some of us see long range plans. God just let us see what's going on around, around us right now. And you know the best thing we can do is put our hands to the pile that God has put in front of us and finish the will of God and do the will of God. Hey, they no need to turn back now. God's give us something to do. Let's do it with all our heart. Let's do it with all our might. Let's do it with love. Let's do it with grace. Let's do it with perseverance. Let's finish the will of God. Finish! That mossy back deacon meets you at the back door and says, hey, thank you for preaching too long. You need to trim your messages up. That old long John Jezebel meets you at the back door and said, if I know you was going to preach that long, I'd have brought me a sandwich. Look at her in her God-given eyeballs, tell her to bring a loaf of bread and a pack of meat the next service. You're going to preach all night. Amen. Amen. I thought about it. I ain't never pastored, but I don't know why I meditate about stuff like this. There's a fella up there where I come from. He has a vote of confidence every year at his church and they voted him out here last time. I said, what? I mean, I thought I knowed what an idiom was this morning. I thought, I thought. I looked at Brother Andy. He said, what I think it means? That means there's stupid people. He said, no, and he told me what it meant. But I'm just a vote of confidence. I tell you, the next time I hear of somebody going to have a vote of confidence on the preacher, I'm going to take a devil that made a mention of it and take him up to the pulpit. And you ought to have a vote of confidence on his side. Say amen right there. Yeah, I done got sidetracked, but that's a good way to go. Amen. I'm talking about finishing. Hey, you finish, make them vote you out. Make them run you off. Hey, man, come hell or high water. You want to be like that bulldog that wanted him a T-bone steak so bad. He jumped up on the back of that heifer. Hey, man, got a hold of her prayer and would not let go. And they were running through the field and she's trying to buck him off but he's holding on for everything he's got and you want to know why because he wanted a T-bone hey man boy to heaven watch I told the devil one time if you're going to ride me you're going to have to do it without a saddle buddy I ain't giving you a saddle you ain't put a bit in my mouth hey man hey we ought to make it rough on that crowd that don't want us to finish the will of God you better quit putting your confidence in man and asking everybody else what they think I tell you we better get back and a confirm up not with flesh and blood I'm going get my orders up from headquarters and walk in with God and stand with God and do it the blessed will of God. I had a man come, every preacher, everybody that comes up to me anymore. Brother John, how do you know God called you to preach? I say, because when I started asking real men of God how they know God called one of them to preach, that's when I know God wanted me to preach. You didn't get that, did you? It'll be preach or die, neighbor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll be preach or die. Dear God, you hearing me? I'm not going to brag on myself, but I don't know about the rest of you guys. My wife's here. She'll testify this fact. I woke her up in the middle of the night in the sleep and poked her and said, I think we ought to get that quartet to sing next. Hey, man, I woke up in the middle of the night preaching. Hey, man, go to bed preaching, wake up in the morning preaching. Dear God, live, breathe, eat. I don't see how some of you preachers say God called you to preach and you ain't got no desire to. If y'all didn't let me preach around here, hey, too many street corners down the road. I'll find me somewhere to preach. Hey, too many nursing homes. I'll find me some. You want to know why? Because 18 years ago, when I got on that altar and I'd give it all to God, I may come hell in a high water. Hey, something on the inside of me it says go, it says go, it says don't quit preaching, it says go, and don't stop now, we've come too far, and I look back again, dear God, don't quit man of God, don't quit preacher's wife, stay with God. Finish! We've come too far to look back now. Jesus didn't quit when it got dark. He finished it. Next slide. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, whether you believe it or not, I did not chastise Jesus. God the Father did. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Smitten of God. I don't understand that, Brother Wagner. It goes so far over my little pea brain mind 
But I know it's right because the Bible said it's right. Oh, every bit of the judgment of God ever known to man. I do not, no brethren, I, I said the other day, and I want to clarify something. I do not believe that Jesus, when he went to the heart of the earth, I do not believe that he went to the hell side and suffered hell. You hear me and hear me well. He suffered every bit of hell on the cross. He suffered every bit of the white throne judgment on the cross. He suffered every bit of the lake of fire on the cross. Every sin that ever was committed, being committed, past, present, and future. He died for the sins of everybody. To the first one that was born, to the last one that will be born, to the last sin that will be committed. Jesus died for them all. Oh boy, what a load that our lovely Lord had on him. Oh, but God's the one that poured it out on him. In the same hands that just smote him. And the same hands that just poured the judgment of God out on him are the same hands that it just puts his spirit into. Oh, brother, when Jesus, or in Hebrews 12, rather, when God chastises us for doing wrong, and Jesus did no wrong, but when he does us this way, the Bible said, lift up your hands, the weary hands. I tell you, we better learn how to overcome a whipping, and I'm going to tell you how to do it. And just thank God for the whipping, and thank God for the chastisement, and just lift your hands up, and say, Lord, thank you. I don't understand everything but blessed be the name of God praise the Lord when we put our spirit into the hands of the Father you don't have to worry about no smart aleck preachers you don't have to worry about no smart aleck wives smart aleck children Smart. I tell you, can I just run one rabbit for just a brief? I'm so sick of what we call hard preaching in our day. It makes me want to just walk out to a building and not listen to anybody. They think cutting people down and telling harsh jokes and telling the women they look like fat heifers and all that stuff. That ain't hard preaching. That's stupid preaching. I'm going to tell you what, it ain't hard Bible preaching is what we need in our day. Bible, and I've been guilty of everything. I just preached to you before. I'm going to tell you right now, why not just preach a Bible, line upon line, preach it. Am I preaching the Bible today? Am I preaching my opinion? Am I preaching the Bible? I tell you, we better put our spirit in the hands of God the Father and let God touch our spirit. On and on we could go, but I'm done today. I've come too far to turn back now because i got to die to my past. I've come too far to turn back now because when it got dark he didn't leave me like the little boy and the daddy <laughs> mama died and the little boy probably eight nine years old maybe younger than that and the little boy come to the daddy after the funeral that day and said daddy can I sleep with you tonight I'm scared mama ain't here she didn't tuck me in the night she died with cancer he said, all right, son, maybe just tonight. And that little boy went up caught in a bed with his daddy in about the middle of the night after that daddy got to sleeping. He felt a little set of hands over his face, rubbing his eyes and rubbing his face, sticking his hands in front of his nose. And he woke his daddy up and said, Daddy, he said, boy, what are you doing? He said, Daddy, the lights are out, and I just want to see if you're still breathing. I didn't want to, I done lost mom, and I didn't want to lose you. That should be the name of God. I'm glad I ain't got to go looking for him. Boy, in the dark times, he'll come looking for me. Hallelujah! We've come out. Has God not been good to us when it got bad? Has God not been good to us when the valley came? Has God not been good to us when the storms came? How dare we shut up on him now? How dare we quit on him now? When it got dark, God developed us and blessed us and helped us and breathed on us and anointed us and helped us. In our darkest hour, God has helped us. Lastly, thirdly, and I'm done. I'm done. I've come too far to look back now because on the other side of the hill, there's somebody down without God and going to hell. The same pew I sat on that night went down to the altar, Brother Eric. There's somebody else sitting on that pew going to hell. And they didn't get saved. There's another thief on the other side of Jesus. Heard everything that man heard. Saw everything that man saw. Pastor Ricky Gravely preached one of the greatest messages I've ever heard in my life. He's born in his heart. If y'all want to know where the heart it was born in, right here. Preached on the subject going to hell from Calvary. And boy, how dare I Yes, I rejoice. Yes, I praise the Lord. Yes, I say glory to God. 
Oh, I wrote it in my notes. How many times have I shouted about the repentant thief? How many times have we rejoiced about us being ourselves? But can I be honest with you? I have never shed a tear over this other thief that did not get saved that day. And he never thought to cry about him. Oh, I don't even study him because he went the wrong direction. But today as we study him, he's a soul burning in hell right now. And if we could get him up here to testify to us today, he'd say, whatever you do, do like that other thief did. I should have took my rebuke. I shouldn't have reviled him. I shouldn't have looked for some other miracle. I should have just put my faith in him. I should have just asked him to forgive me. I should have asked him to take me to paradise. I'm going to tell you, there's some of you in here today. You're lost without God and you're going to burn in hell. You'll never see the street of gold in the gates of pearl and the walls of jasper. You're lost as a ball in high wheat. You're playing games with God, playing games with your soul. And in the same church that others have got saved, you're going to die without God and go to hell from it, from the same pew that somebody else got off of. You're going to die without God and go to hell from it, up from the same order that somebody else got saved off of. You're going to go to hell from it, from the same pulpit that the man of God preached. A gospel message. And you listen to preaching that had the anointing of God on it. Had the power of God on it. You're going to die and go to hell from it. I wouldn't dare call your name. I ain't even going to tell you whether you're a boy or a girl. My wife don't even know this unless she heard me. I cried myself to sleep last night. I don't say that, no pats on my back. I cried myself to sleep last night over some of you going to hell. I cried myself to sleep last night. Because you little boys and girls is born at the foot of Calvary. You ain't never had to walk over a drunk daddy and a drunk mama. You wasn't raised up in a trailer park. You don't know how you don't know what it is. All the days I lived looking over my back wondering who's gonna come beat me next. Oh, you don't know what it is. You was born in Canaan. You was born at the cross. All you've ever known is a preaching daddy and a praying mama. And here you sit lost as, lost as a drunkard, lost as a doper. Oh, one day God's going to cut the light. You better run to the light of Calvary. You better run to the cross. That's your only hope. That's your only refuge. You're going to die without God and burn in hell. You're going to hell. If you die today, you're going to hell. If you don't repent and believe the gospel, you're going to hell. You're going to die without God and burn in hell. You're Help him to have a You better go to God. You better go to Calvary. I can't quit because some of you are going to hell. I could not bear in my conscience. I could not live in myself. Turning my back on God and me and somebody out in the world that needed God and not giving them the gospel and them seeing me in a bar somewhere. Them seeing me playing lottery somewhere. And them say, well, that preacher, he, he must have been in it for the money. He must have been in it for the money. I'm going to speak the truth in Christ and lie not. If I thought I was ever going to quit, I'd do it right now. I'd go home, I'd tell my pastor, I'm done. I'd sit on the church pew, I'd support my man of God, I'd be faithful to the church before I'd done anything to send any of you to hell. Does that make any sense? Is that, or is that just foolish thinking or foolish talking? Some of my best friends, they got children going to hell. Some of my family's going to hell. And I've come too far to turn back now because of that thief that was dying on the other side of the cross. What are we singing? What are we playing? Can we, have you got that? Maybe there's a fountain we could sing that second verse. There's a fountain that dying thief rejoiced to see. Pastor wants me to give an invitation. You're in here lost today. Me and the pastor had an agreement. I asked him how long he wanted me to preach and he said, I don't know. And I said, you just tell me when you want me to quit, and I'll quit. And I've been sensitive to pastoral authority. But you're lost, sinner friend. 
Do I have to give you 50 illustrations of little boys and little girls that died without good? You're playing games. You're lost. You're lost. You're lost. Every head bowed and every eye closed just begins to play softly. Before we stand, before we stand, I want to ask you a question. Nobody's looking. Preacher John, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you just lift your hand up and down real fast? Pray for me. Anybody anywhere? Anybody? I see that hand. I see that hand. Oh, God bless you, sweetheart. Anybody else? Anybody else? How about it? Say, Brother John, I know I'm lost. Would you just lift your hand? 